Uh, hopefully you're getting this beautiful, sunny, nice, cool weather that we are down here. I am uh, about an hour and a half out of the uh, Detroit area. A uh, little bit about me, if you haven't taken a webinar with me before, my name is Colleen DeLang. I do the association training across the, stri uh, across the state. Um, excited to announce that we now have 97% in the data sharing, which means that you now get more listings, more data, and a lot more in your MLS. So if you haven't taken a webinar with me before, and I do see some new names popping in, um, basically I try to keep this as interactive as we can, meaning I would encourage you to ask questions throughout the demonstration today. Uh, feel free as an agent myself of 22 years, there's many times I have a question and I just want to, maybe it's something specific to your business, feel free to just pop those in the questions box. I will be checking those uh, periodically. It does alert me if you have a question and uh, so we can stop and go ahead and address some of those. Um, a little bit about this too, um, I am recording this class. So if you need to step away, if you get a call, um, you know, or maybe you're bottom lining an offer, feel free if you have to step away, I'm recording it and I'm putting it on the UPAR playlist. So if you miss anything along the way, uh, you can always go back to it. This is actually one of my favorite classes uh, to teach and it's a class I really kind of designed all myself and here's why. Uh, when I got my license many, many years ago, um, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know. And so there were a lot of what I call kind of secrets in Paragon. Um, Paragon is a great company built by great technology people. But here's the thing, they've never sold a house in their life. So they have kind of buried some really cool stuff in Paragon that as an agent, I'm like, wow, that is really cool. That would save me some clicks. So that's really kind of how I designed this whole class. So just kind of going over um, what we're gonna look at today. Uh, we're gonna look at showing time carts and using the Collab Center, um, how you can have everything dropped into a showing time cart. Some of you may be familiar with showing time carts, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Showing time is being completely redesigned from the top down. Um, it's going to completely change this fall. I got a sneak peek at it. So I'm going to give you some of the uh, inside scoop on what's coming for you as well. I'm going to show you some secrets in using the Collab Center to drop everything into your cart. I'm also going to show you some ways that you can search for 15 or 20 different addresses, maybe that someone sent you from Zillow or Realtor.com. You can throw them in one field, copy and paste, and it allows you to pull them all up and text them immediately over to a buyer. I'm going to show you some custom searching, ways that you can search in large areas and even exclude certain areas. Um, so let's say you want to search all of Houghton County, but there's a little area in Houghton that maybe your buyer isn't looking at. You can actually put in all of Houghton County and just remove that little area. Um, single property websites, we're going to talk about that. Posting your listings out onto social media, using cool radius searching. Um, you can put up to 10 shapes on the map now, so some great things have been added to that. How to put your listings in a little quicker, pull from the tax records. We now have all 83 counties in Michigan where you can literally click a button, pull those tax records in and start your listing so you don't have to fill out a lot of extra information. We're gonna talk about BSNA, quick linking and some of the uh, quick, linking, quick linking action buttons that'll save you time so you don't have to keep re-entering the same information again and again. Uh, we're gonna talk about, and I I know this is kind of a sensitive subject. I know you guys have gone through a lot of change very quickly with the trans, uh, with the um, the transition of going from your previous Paragon to the new Paragon. And I do apologize. I know it hasn't been easy. As an agent myself, I hate change, but you guys had some very unique challenges um, bringing it into the data share. And what you have to remember is when we bring fields that you request into the data share, well, that affects not only you, not only us and our members, but pretty much everyone in the data share now sees these new features. Um, and so it's trying to not only bring them in, but backfill them so everyone understands what they are and how they can be searched on. So it's been a little more work. 
Um, we also didn't realize how many listings you had in Wisconsin. So we had to map the entire state of Wisconsin and bring that in. So it's been a challenge and I apologize. I know, uh, again, uh, it's never easy uh, when you're an agent to have to change the way you've done business, especially after a pandemic. Um, but I think when you see some of the new features that you're getting and the new benefits, um, hopefully you'll say, yeah, it's worth it. It, it is hard to look for a feature that you used to have as a feature and maybe now it's a field or vice versa maybe it's a field now and it was a feature so um again i appreciate your patience going through this all right so enough of my talking uh let's get into the good stuff let's get in uh to exactly what's going on in paragon and i just exit out of this screen here so give me one quick second because i really want to show you today um really a couple of things why um, you're going through all of these uh, growing pains and what's actually going on uh, in the MLS, where you're finding these additional features, uh, where you're finding additional fields, as well as I'm going to throw in some tips on some of my favorite features that most people um, don't even realize are in the MLS. So I am hoping if I can have just one person, anyone in the group, if I can have someone just let me know that they can see my, uh, it should say uh, Keller Williams Lakeside, my Paragon screen. Um, if you can just let me know that you can see and hear me, we'll go ahead and get started. There's nothing worse than being five minutes into a webinar and realizing no one can hear you. So if I can have anybody just open up their GoToWebinar panel and type in the questions box, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, we'll go ahead and kick this off. All right. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Um, nothing, Like I said, nothing worse than, you, you know, you're recording it and five minutes in, you realize, oh my gosh, nobody's seeing your screen. So I appreciate you letting me know. All right. So here is your first time-saving tip and technique. Now, my Paragon screen may look a little bit different than yours. Um, your center section, by the way, is just the difference is where I am, um, the MLS section that you see for UPAR, our brokers control that from where I am. So you guys see UPAR here, um, I see my brokerage. Everything else on the side sections and up above is going to be completely customizable. Um, and meaning we have the same thing except for this very, very middle section. So I just wanna be clear. So if you're looking at it going, mine doesn't look anything like that. Um, we just have a little bit different setup um, our MLS has a page just like yours, um, but the side panels and everything else that we look at today are going to be exactly what you have. Now, with one small exception, you may be looking at this and you may be saying, my quick search, Colleen, is over here on the left side. Um, and yes, you are absolutely right, but this is your first time-saving tip, okay? Because when Paragon comes to you out of the box, it comes to you in what I don't think is very agent friendly um, terms, meaning I don't really care about the Paragon news as an agent. I really care about searching fast and I wanna do it from this dashboard. So keep in mind, you can actually drag and drop these side panel pieces into any order that you want. Um, to do that, you simply grab this bar at the top and you just, grab it and drag it into the position that you want. Now, I personally, I have a little OCD, so I kind of like everything in a certain layout. I like my quick search to be over here to the right. I like my market monitor, the markets I'm watching to be over here to the left. I like to see what's going on on my listings in showing time. Do I have some showing scheduled? What's happening there? So I kind of like these in a certain order. And again, don't be afraid to move them around. If you move them and you're like, oh, geez, that lady with the fuzzy hair, now everything's disappearing. Don't worry. What happens is when you start moving things around, a lot of them move to the bottom. But the reason I tell you this is right out of the gate, they give you Paragon News at the top. You know what? Quite honestly, I don't think I've ever read the Paragon News as an agent. Not important to me. So you can actually move those panels around in any order that's going to work best for your business. All right, this always, um, people always say that this is one of their favorite tips. So I'm going to show it uh, quickly to you. If you find that you are doing a lot of extra clicks for something that you do quite often, 
Nobody knows this, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of Paragon, so if you look down by the bottom of my screen here, do you see where it says search residential? If you don't want to have to do those extra clicks, did you know you can put all of your favorites right here? So let me give you a good example. So for me, I like to jump into my Cloud CMA account quite often to do property flyers. But to do that, it's extra clicks, right? I have to go to resources, which is your toolbox. I have to then go to Cloud CMA. I have to wait for that to open. Then I have to go to the flyers section. Did you know that if you just go to this gear right here at the bottom, you can set those things up to be all open for you? Let me show you. So if you click that gear right down at the bottom, this is where you can customize your quick action links. So if you want to go, let's say, right to your hot sheet, you could go ahead and add your hot sheet to that bottom button. Or let's say you're like me and you want to uh, go to Cloud CMA with one click. You can actually just go to the area of Paragon that Cloud would be in, which again is your resources. That's your toolbox, right? I can say I want to add Cloud CMA and those. I now want to save it. Now watch what happens. So I have now added Cloud CMA. If I want to go right to Cloud CMA right from here without all those extra clicks, I just click that button and it's taking me right into Cloud. I don't have to go to resources, to Cloud, same thing. And you can put whatever you want there. So as you can see, it's now taking me right into my Cloud account. I don't have all of those extra clicks. Um, another good example. So of course, it will take you to your hot sheet. But let's say you don't want to have to go to search and to residential. You just want to open up your residential search right away. You can actually set up your residential search in that quick or speed bar. That allows you to go right to that without those extra clicks. So I didn't, I'm not, and I'm just going to be honest, I did not know that was there for a really long time. So when I put that, this class together, I'm like, I'm going to show people that because it is really nice when I am on the phone with somebody and I can just click there and go right to what I'm looking for. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I kind of thought I was crazy. Am I like the only one who does not know that this exists? <laughs> So anyway, um, that's your first time saving tip. Remember, you can do that with pretty much anything. So if you are tired of like me going through the extra clicks and you want to just go right there, maybe you want showing time there. Maybe you want cloud CMA there. Maybe you want your single property websites there. So you can just click and open up those things. Um, it's a whole lot easier than all those extra clicks waiting for it to load. Um, so that's your first time saving tip. And again, I just wanted to show you that because for a long time, I did not know that was there. So go down to the bottom. Again, click on that gear. Find what you're looking for, whether it's a search, whether it's a hot sheet. Um, maybe you want, um, you know, your preferences to be there, your contacts. You could click on your contact records from there. So you just have to change. The only thing you have to remember is like if you're going in, if you want cloud CMA or you want something like that, you have to go into that section. So you just want to change the menu categories to what's in your resources. And I can add any of those. You just want to click check it off, hit add and then you wanna go ahead and hit save, and then that will put that right on your handy little speed bar down below. Okay, so your next time-saving tip, um, and this is something, I kid you not, I begged Brian, our uh, chief technology officer, for three years to get this. I said, you know what, Brian, as an agent, it really bums me out when someone calls me, they found 10 properties on Zillow, and they're finding those 10 properties faster than I can find it in Paragon. Something seems wrong with that because I'm supposed to be the trusted professional, right? I'm supposed to be able to get the information for them first. So he said, well, what do you need it to do? And I said, I want to be able to enter up to 30 addresses that they're giving me. I also want the ability to get an email from a buyer and copy those addresses, put them in one field, hit enter, and then text everything over. Because what I was doing, I was getting these addresses, whether they came via email or whether they were telling me on the phone, and I was having to put them in one at a time, 
write down the ML number so that I could email them after. It was such a pain. I thought, God, there's got to be a better way to do this. So Brian said, well, and he built something. It wasn't quite what we were looking for, but then he came up with the perfect scenario. And it's called full addresses. So it's kind of right over here. I'm going to show you. And it might be covered by your go-to webinar box. I hope it's not, but it's right in my quick search. Now, out of the box, this might not be there. So this is an important one. You may have to go in and add it. Now you can add this, by the way, to your quick search. You can add it, by the way, to your full search. So I use it all the time. I would recommend adding it to both. But here's how you add it if you don't have it. I'm gonna show how you add it and then I'm gonna show you exactly what it will do for you. So if you click on that gear, and I'm just gonna take mine out just so I can show you exactly how to add it. Um, when you open up that gear, it basically shows you all the fields that you could have in your quick search. If, by the way, here's another tip. If there's a bunch of stuff in your quick search that you don't ever use, don't be afraid to take it out. Like for instance, if you never search on a particular item, you can simply check it off and remove it. Um, these are all ones that I use quite often, so I like them in there. But again, if there's something in there like, um, you know, maybe you never search on county or maybe you never search on a particular field, don't be afraid to remove it. But the one I wanna show you, you wanna just go up to this top um, search box where it says find, and you wanna just type in the word full. It'll pop right up. If it doesn't pop up, that means you may already have it in your existing search. I've been trying to get Brian to add that as a default because I think people will really like it so much. So if you check off full addresses and you check off add, here's your next quick tip. You can move these, you can drag and drop them in any order that you want. So if you want full addresses, if you start using this as much as I think you will, you may want to have that right up here at the top. Another one you may want to consider adding is the original UPAR MLS number. So if you have a lot of clients who are emailing you MLS numbers from your previous system, now what that means is um, because you're now in the data sharing, now you're in this bigger uh, data share, you're seeing listings throughout the state, you can, if, if let's say um, just below here in the, you know, maybe uh, in this, uh, area you want to list grandma's cottage something like that you can see that data where you couldn't before so the idea is you're seeing a lot more data but if they are still using if they're sending you the old upar mls number you still want to be able to find it in this system because your old numbers were the same as another mls's numbers so we, everything kind of gets re uh, numbered if you will in the data share so what happens is if you're looking for old numbers in your old previous system you're looking it up by the mls number not the address the address is really quite honestly the easier way in my opinion but if you have an old mls number you can add the upar mls number field into your quick search and you can pull them up that way. So just keep in mind, you can add in whatever you want here to make your searching easier. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add full addresses. I'm going to apply it. And now let me show you what the full addresses actually does. Did you know that you can enter up to 30 addresses in this field and then text them all out? So if I do, Let's say I have a client who calls me and says that uh, they want information on 1871 Cove. They want information on 123 Cherry Street. They want information on, um, oops, I put B Cherry Street. Let's do 123 Cherry Street. They want information on um, 456 West Street. And I don't even know if these are real properties, but just to give you kind of an example, you can just keep typing and hit enter after that. Now, you're probably thinking, well, there could be some closed records with that, and that's going to give you a lot more. You're right. You could go right to status. If I know that maybe they're active or pending, I might want to put that in because that's going to keep me from having to go through a lot of closed properties that maybe I didn't want to view. So, the point is, if you're trying to find a lot of properties fast, this is a great tool to use. The other thing that this does is if, let's pretend for a moment that this is 1871 Cove Street or Cove Lane or Cove Boulevard or Cove Circle, it will automatically pull that for you because right next to where Cove is, there's kind of that little X, 
right before that X is actually an asterisk, a built-in asterisk that you can't see. So no matter if it's Cove Street, Cove Lane, Cove Boulevard, it's still going to pull it up for you. But then there's those cases, so we'll use another, another example here. Um, then there's those cases where you may get a, a client call and they say, you know what, Colleen, I'm sitting in front of a house on 123 Main Street, but I don't know, is it East Main Street or is it West Main Street or North or South? So you can always use that asterisk. So I can say, okay, I want to find 123 West or East. I don't know which one it is. And I can use that asterisk as a wild card, meaning uh, no matter whether it's east, west, or whatever that directional is, if I don't know it, it's automatically going to pull it for me. Um, so keep in mind that's a really easy way. If you got an email, so a little trick on that, let's say you got an email in, uh, they sent you 20 addresses that they found on Zillow or other places. Now the key is I always hit forward on the email so it opens up the text in your email. Just make sure you have them separated by commas. So again, if they just sent you a bunch of different addresses, they're random, make sure you're putting a comma in between them. That's why I hit the forward to open up the text. Then you can simply copy them and paste them into the full addresses field. Then you can hit enter. And the good news is, so let's actually take a look at that. Now, when we hit search, we've got those properties right in front of us, right? We're gonna select them. We're gonna share them. Maybe we wanna text them over to our buyer. You can go ahead and you can text them with the collab link. You can send them the collab link or just hit that text button. If your contacts are already in Paragon, you could simply find them and send it uh, right to them that way. Or if you have to add them in new, you're just gonna put in their first name, their last name and their phone number and you can go ahead and send them right away via text. So I'm not sure if everyone else knew that was uh, that it worked that way, but that full addresses field is something I wanted for a long, long time. So hopefully that helps you too. I was so tired of trying to add them manually one by one. It was really starting to make me crazy. <laughs> so hopefully you find that um, helpful as well. Okay, so now let's talk about showing time carts. The first thing on our list. Um, I am a big fan of the Collab Center. The Collab Center is auto prospecting for your buyer. Um, it's very, very easy to use. And the idea behind the Collab Center is it's really, and I get a lot of, a lot of calls and they'll say to me, well, Colleen, I don't see a button. You said this agent resources up here was my toolbox. There's no Collab Center button. And that is true. It's because the Collab Center is really just a search that you marry to a contact record. That's really what the Collab Center is. So it's so simple. There really isn't a button needed. You're just setting up a search and marrying it to a contact record so you can send them properties immediately. But the Collab Center, if you haven't taken that class, and there's a whole class on the Collab Center. Um, I think we have another one coming up, uh, I think next week. Um, the Collab Center, not only does it allow you to auto prospect out to your buyer so that if anything new is coming on the market with their criteria, they immediately see it. What else it does, um, it allows you to do an agent preview. Um, so I kid you not, this is a true story. You cannot make these stories up in real estate, I swear. Um, I had a buyer who was referred to me from a friend of mine. We closed on her house. She sent me a referral and she got her all set up, showed her a couple houses and she called me one day and she said, Colleen, if you send me one more yellow sided house, I'm going to find another agent. Well, First of all, I didn't know she didn't like yellow siding. She never had mentioned that to me. And second of all, there is no button in the MLS that says remove yellow sided houses. <laughs> so it became a little challenging. So that's when the agent preview comes in. So what you can see right here is I have the ability, if I use the agent preview tool, to approve everything before it ever goes out to that, that buyer. So I get the first look. Um, there's also uh, an agent recommended in the Collab Center. So uh, another true story, I had uh, a girlfriend who was also a trainer at my role source. She is a manager at Real Estate One in, in Shelby over here by me. She um, listed a house and it was one street outside of where my first time home buyers were looking. So. These home buyers, they must have said to me no less than 50 times, Colleen, we're only going to live in St. Clair Shores. Only show us houses in St. Clair Shores. 
she listed it one street out in Roseville. Now, I saw the pictures. I knew the house was perfect for them. And as we know, in this market, sometimes what buyers set out to buy isn't what they actually close on, right? They realize that there's not a lot on the market. Sometimes we have to decrease our haves and wants a little bit. So anyway, she listed a house one street outside. I did an agent recommended, which popped it up in their collab center so they could actually see it. And the beauty of that was it ended up being the one that we wrote and closed on, but they wouldn't have seen it normally with just their search criteria. So there is this agent recommended where you, the agent, even if it didn't fit all their search criteria, can still pop it up so that they can see it. But let's actually uh, uh, take a quick look at the collab center. So the collab center is a great tool for setting up those buyers, as I mentioned. I'm just gonna use one that I set up uh, previously so you can kind of see it. It's where uh, buyers can go in, they can communicate with you, um, spouses or partners can share a site so they can communicate with each other on houses that they wanna see. And basically what happens is anytime there's a home that meets their criteria, it immediately pops up in their collab center and then they can favorite it they can mark it as a possible, they can reject it, they can create custom folders. Um, so there's a lot that they can do within it. Um, but what I like about this is when they favorite things, so I'm just gonna go in, when they favorite properties, I'm just gonna favorite a couple of these just so you get the general idea, um, it will allow me to drop it into my showing time cart. So, Let's say for just a, a quick moment that they really liked this house on Malorn and you can see it's a price change. Now put it in their criteria and let's say they want to take a look at the details. They can go ahead and click on view details. They can go in, they can see all the interior photos. They can see all the, the remarks from the MLS. Now, here's some other cool things that it does. It gives them all the room sizes, property history. But did you know that it also gives them the seller's disclosures and lead-based paints? So when they have questions about something, they can actually see it right in their Collab Center. I love that. Instead of having to send it myself, they get that extra level of detail. They have where they can figure out what they want to spend, what type of mortgage they're looking at, and they can create kind of a rough idea of their mortgage payment. But the reason I'm showing you this is they can also, instead of them favoriting the house, which by the way, alerts you as the agent right away that they're interested in that property. Now I generally have to pick up the phone and I have to call Mr. Schmageggy and I have to say, Mr. Schmageggy, when would you like to see this house? And Mr. Schmageggy usually says, I don't know, I gotta call Mr. Schmageggy, let me see when she's free. Now I'm waiting, right? Did you know that you can ask them to simply favorite the houses that they like you can ask them to let them know in this request a showing time. So what they do is they pick the time and date that they may want to see those properties and it emails all of that right to you. So I got to tell you, it is way, way easier than me having to track them down and, and do it that way. So um, when I click on the um, when I click on the email that comes in, I can do it that way. But here's your next time saving tip and technique. If you get your clients to favorite it and also put in the time they want to see it, watch what you can do. So right in Paragon, when I go to their contacts, when I see that there's something that they're interested in, I can click on the favorites button. So as you can see, they favorited five or six properties. I think I just favorited another one, so it might be six. I'm clicking on the favorites button. Okay, here's where it gets really good. I'm dropping all of these at one time because these are all the ones I know they want to see dropping them all into a showing time cart by going to this plug now I apologize I don't think this is really labeled all that well again this is where my agent brain sometimes gets where the technology side and the agent side don't meet up but think of actions this little plug-in as kind of like a plug-in to other programs so that's you know it's the best way I can kind of describe it but actions allows you to throw all those properties into a showing time cart. Now watch what happens here. So I'm going to throw it into a showing time cart and I'm going to create 
basically a new showing time card that I can add properties to or remove them if they go pending. And it will also ask you, who are you gonna show these to? Um, now, when this first happened, I was very leery, I'm gonna be honest, of putting um, my buyer's name in here. I'm like, well, what if the listing agent sees it? What if they know that person? But you and your broker are actually the only ones who can see who your buyer is in your buyer's name. What it's really geared to do is it's really geared to show you on average how many homes you're showing to your buyers and you can see all of the homes that you've showed that buyer. Um, case in point, I have a very good friend here. She also teaches with us. Her name is uh, Lisa Harris. She's a phenomenal trainer. She's been in business even longer than I have. I think she taught me a lot of what I know. But she um, showed her by, I kid you not, you can't make this stuff up in real estate, 99 homes before they ended up closing. And I'm like, Lisa, what'd you make, like a quarter an hour? I mean, you know, she said no, but she said this feature actually really helped her because when they got to uh, home 70, she literally went into showing time, printed out how many properties they had seen. She slid in in front of her buyer and said, we're probably going to have to get more realistic about our price point or we're going to have to decrease some of these haves and wants because you can see we've seen 70 now and we, you know, so it's a great tool when you're trying to get them to be a little more um, realistic. And uh, so anyway, you can put a buyer's name with your cart and then just when do you want to show those properties? But here's what I like about the showing time carts if you haven't used them before. It shows you right away. Well, I'm going to show you the map first, actually. Let me jump there first. If you look at this map, it drops them in the way it's putting them in from the MLS. But let's face it, with gas being extremely expensive right now, the last thing you want to do is make all these additional trips all over the city, right? So what you can do is you can actually put them in a smart route. You just hit this smart route button. It's going to recalculate all of those. It's going to then drop them in the logical order of driving. As you can see, it's now going to make a lot more sense the way we're going to drive. When you confirm these appointments, you can also even do turn by turn directions that you can send over to your buyer. Why I love that is how many times do your buyers say to you, well, which house are we starting at? What's going to be the next house? What's going to, it's so nice when you can just send it over to your buyer's phone and your buyer can get those turn by turn directions to see exactly where you're starting and stopping. Um, all right, so let me let me jump up here just a moment. The other thing I really like is if you're running out the door to go show a series of properties, and let's say it's kind of last minute. Well, if there is a go and show right here, as you can see under appointment type, it says go and show. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, go and show means that as soon as you request the appointment, you're going to get that lock box. So that's a really good one probably to start off with. If it's a, an appointment required, well, it could be waiting on a homeowner to confirm it or a listing agent to confirm it. So that's maybe not the best one to start off with. So you can kind of put them in that order. Um, the other thing I like is it will show you if a time is not available um, and it will show you if there is another agent showing the property, if the if the listing agent, for instance, doesn't allow overlapping showings. And I don't know how that works in your market. I can tell you down here in our market, a lot of the agents do. But it's nice when I can see, OK, this is blocked out because another agent's showing it or there's another appointment. Um, or if it's not available to be shown at that time. So I can see all of that from one screen. Oh, looks like we have a question. The buyer's name on showing request, is that the same that we do in a regular scheduling of a showing, meaning only me and my, um, the buyer's name on showing request, is that the same that we do in a regular scheduling of showing on a property only me and my broker sees that correct um and you got it a hundred percent correct jennifer when you're putting that buyer's name because that was my worry um so i was worried was the listing agent going to see it because what if they know them or what if they work with them or um you know and no you're absolutely right it's the same thing it's only going to be seen by you and you if your broker chooses to run a report he would be able to see it that way but technically no you're the only one who's going to see see that buyer name? Really good question. The listing agent is not going to see that. That's strictly confidential for you. But again, if your broker takes the time to run a report, he could see that too. They do that more for security um, because a long time ago, there was a couple agents um, 
that there were some incidents. And so we, we now let the broker see what properties have been shown just in case something like that happens. Um, okay, so hopefully that answered. Yes, yeah, it is. It's really helpful when, and I'm telling you, when you need to get them a little bit more realigned, so the, um, uh, Jennifer was kind enough to mention, um, she didn't know that you could actually go in and, and see all of the properties, and it is. You can actually print them out, and it is really helpful if you're showing a lot of properties and you kind of want to get them realigned that mm, their haves and wants might have to be decreased a little in this market because we know how, how it is. It's a struggle for buyers right now. Um, but anyway, back to this part of it, it, you can kind of see what's blocked out. And I can see that they're not allowing showings here until later. So, but I can see what's available. Now, here's what I really like. And I think this would be more helpful for you guys than even where I am. Um, from property one to property two, it's going to take 16 minutes to drive there. So it's gonna show you your drive time and how many miles it is from one property to the other. What I like about that is now with, um, after COVID, we saw because their the buyer demand is so good, a lot of the listing agents are shortening the amount of appointment windows. So meaning where we used to give two hour appointment windows, you know, we're trying to get as many people through as we could and we wanted to make it easy. Now, because there's so many people going through, they're shortening them to 15 or 30 minutes, it, at least a lot of them around here. Um, so if that's the case and there's a 30 minute appointment window, especially if you have a central lock on that property or a master lock on that property with the uh, functionality that only lets you in at your appointment time, well, it's really now more important than ever to know um, exactly when you're going to be showing that property and um, what the time frame of availability is going to be. So. What I'm saying is where the appointment windows are shorter, we're gonna really need to, like in my case, Master Lock only opens 15 minutes before your appointment and 15 minutes after. So if I'm not scheduling that property correctly, I may not get in. So that's why I'm saying it's becoming more and more important. I hope I explained that correctly. Um, if you click on uh, pick time, you're gonna see that it will ask you, if it's a central lock, do you have um, access to a central lock, yes or no. Um, and then you're just going to pick the time that you want to show that property. So maybe I want to show it today between 11, 15, and, 11, and you can see it, they've got a, a 15 minute appointment window. A lot of them will let you expand it a little bit longer, but you can see not much longer here. They're only giving a half hour appointment window. Um, and then I can go ahead and save it. Now, the nice thing is instead of me having to um, say, okay, when did I schedule this one? When am I going to schedule the next one? I can see the appointment block right here. I know it's going to take me 15 minutes of 16 minutes of time. So when I'm going into my next appointment, you notice this one doesn't use a central lock. I can say, okay, I want to schedule that for noon. Um, again, we've got a shorter appointment window. This one's allowing for a little bit longer one. And I can go ahead and start blocking these in. But it's way easier, in my opinion, than having to, um, you know, where is this one? Where is that one? What time did I do this one? The old way I used to do on paper, which was horrible. So hopefully that helps you as well. Two more quick things on this. Again, this is being redesigned. This is going to be even easier. You can edit a showing time cart from your showing time app on your phone right now. Um, but you can't start one. And that has always been a frustration of mine because if I'm out and I've got three or four properties, I just found I want to put them all in my showing time cart. Well, the good news is um, with the new edits that they're doing, they're basically redesigning this from the top down. Um, you're going to be able to do those showing time carts even on your phone through their app. So um, some really good stuff coming there. Uh, the other thing is, if you are, let's say, Jennifer, who's been so kind and asked so many good questions, let's say Jennifer is um, doing some relocation, and they're coming in, she's going to show them these six houses, but she's also going to take them to a restaurant in between house three and four. You can actually click add another stop, put in the address of the restaurant, so when they're following along on their GPS, they know exactly where to go. So you can put in other locations, too. Um, 
I, I and I, I say this tongue in cheek, but I seem to get my share of crazy buyers lately. I don't know. Maybe it's the crazy hair they're attracted to. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but um, I always get that buyer who I get the whole cart set up. Right. And then they call and they're like, great news, Colleen. We found two more houses we want to see. So keep in mind, you can always edit that even on your phone. You can add a listing stop. You just put in that listing MLS number. You can quickly add it to your tour. And obviously, you just kind of have to move it around a little bit, depending on, you know, if it needs an appointment confirmed or if it's a go and show, things like that. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Um, I don't know if you're all really familiar with showing time carts. Um, I was not. Um, so I just thought, you know, I was kind of, I hate to admit this, but I was clicking the single link and doing one after another and it just it took so much longer so hopefully you picked up a couple things in showing time that will help you once you have all your time set into place so you can see them now i can see that i might have to move this one because you can see that there's obviously a homeowner that needs to be confirmed here remember you can um, move these around so maybe i want to make this one uh three and I want to make this one four because I can see, see how nice it is when you can just see what that grayed out time is right laid out for you. It just, in my opinion, it just makes all the difference. So if I update that, now I've got them in a better order, right? Because now I can, I can actually block that at the appropriate time. So just, you know, kind of a couple quick ideas. Then you hit send request. Um, anything that needs to be confirmed then goes to those parties. And in this case, we would have four lock boxes that would be immediately delivered to us so we could get in and, and start showing those properties. So hopefully you picked up a couple things there. Again, I tried to create this class over some of the advanced things that I didn't know were in there and I kind of found frustrating. Um, so hopefully that uh, helped a little bit um, and you kind of got a couple little tips for using that. All right, some of the other things I wanted to remind myself, I made little notes here so I didn't forget. Um, I showed you the multiple addresses with the texting, but I do want to show you something that's brand new. Another reason you're going through all this conversion, and, and I apologize, I know conversion is hard, but you're getting some new great tools. And one of them, I think you're really, really going to like, it's done automatically for you on every single listing that you add into Paragon. So let me show you that one. And I apologize, I can show you on mine, but it's not as fancy as my friend Tom, who just listed a $3 million home. It looks way better on his. So I'm going to show you his, and then I'll show you mine too. All right, so my friend Tom just listed a beautiful $3 million home on Lakeshore. By the way, another little tip, use this. If you are looking for one property, one agent, or one MLS number, use this power search at the top. It's really good. I just type in 205. It happens to be on Lakeshore. I type in 205 Lake. You can see it immediately pops up. Actives are always at the top, so you can find them the quickest. I click on it, and bam, that listing is ready to use. So what I want to show you now is when you create a listing in Paragon, the new tool that you get by being a UPAR member is the single property website, and it's a great way to share your listings. So if you are going up to that listing, you'll see it kind of looks like a checkbox on your listing. There's a couple ways, quite honestly, you can get there. You can go through resources where you'll see your property inventory links. It's the same thing, but if you wanted to promote all your listings, I'd probably go to the property inventory links because you don't want to have to find each listing to do that, right? But if you um, are just on your listing and you want to promote it out to social media, you're simply going to click that button and it's going to open up the single property website. Now, there's been a little confusion, I know, um, and it's almost every time when we bring an association on because it's not created the minute you put the listing in. So basically, you put the listing in, you hit save. It does take about 30 minutes to get because what happens is it actually sends all that information over to our website designer. The website designer then uh, pushes the button, makes sure it looks good, saves it, and then you get that confirmation email within about 30 minutes that your listing is ready to share. Now, of course, you can still share your listings on, on Facebook from here. You can share them, but there's some cool things that this does that that doesn't do. So let me show you. If you click on that single property website quick action link, which is what those colorful little buttons are, the idea behind your single property website is that 
when you share it out, it looks a whole lot better and you can share it basically with one click. So let me show you. So when the consumer sees it on Facebook or on Twitter, or maybe you've put it on Pinterest or edited it to LinkedIn or email it out, this is what they're seeing. When they click on the gallery view, it's opening those full scale uh, pictures. And by the way, another little tip, uh, next end of next month, yeah, and I actually previewed one this morning. It looks really good. We will have the highest resolution photos in the entire state. Um, I didn't really realize what a big deal that was because I'm not really in numbers. I'm not a huge photo person. I don't know that much about them. Um, but when I took the same photo and we, I, I asked for an example because quite honestly, they started like 1060 by 3000 megapixels. I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> So I asked him, can you show me on a photo, the same photo, what it would look like in uh, other MLSs, what it would look like in our MLS, and what it will look like. And I'll show you that in just a minute. When you see it, it's an incredible difference. So that's coming at the end of next month. That's going to be very, very exciting. Um, okay. So I want everyone to show you that. Um, when they're scrolling through the gallery, you just hit the arrow. It's going to take them into all those high res photos. Um, the cool thing that this does is if you have a branded tour. Now, in the MLS, let me explain, there are four places for tours. There are branded tours and there are unbranded tours. That means if you, let's say you hire a virtual tour company, maybe Circle Packs, or you're hiring Matterport Photos to do these you know, great uh, virtual tours of the property. Those are generally unbranded tours. And the reason is because those go out in the MLS, right? So you don't want your clients seeing another agent's you know, information on your, on your listings, right? You want it to be your information that's going to your client. Same concept here. The difference in between the branded and unbranded is in a branded tour, you can say, hi, my name is Colleen DeLang. I work at ABC Realty. Let me take you through this home. You can actually put a tour in with your contact information. The nice thing about the single property website is it looks for that tour first. So what it does is it looks and says, OK, does Jennifer have a branded tour? If so, that's the one we're going to use here in the video tour. So when she's sharing it out, it's sharing all of Jennifer's great information and her contact information, her cell phone number. If she's included it, whatever branding she's put in that tour. Maybe it's got her company sign in the background, you know, things like that. The branded tours are always picked up first in your single property website. Of course, if there isn't a branded tour, if you just have a unbranded tour, then it will look at that second and it will grab that one. So you want to make sure you're using those branded tours. And it can be something as simple as you walking through the home with, uh, you know, your cell phone, just introducing yourself and saying you'd love to help them get in this home, maybe pointing out some of the highlights. Um, but it will pick that up first and it will promote that. They can also, um, consumers looking on social media can schedule a showing with you, which again, just emails you the agent. Down below, they can see a nice, easy, streamlined version. They can see the room sizes. Um, it's clean, it's clear, and that's what they're used to on other IDX sites. They can with one click because we know most buyers are looking at these on their cell phone, especially if they're seeing it on Facebook or seeing it on Twitter. They can be connected here to my friend Tom in one uh, click. I can go, I can call him directly. I can do turn by turn directions to his office. But here's my favorite part of this whole thing. Really, when you're sharing out listings and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine I see so many people working so hard on their listings right now they're putting in great photos they're writing great remarks they're putting captions and descriptions on their on their photos they're taking the extra time to really build up their photos they then hit the share button on an IDX site like maybe Zillow or Redfin or even Realtor. And what happens, unfortunately, is you just work so hard. The person who just bought that zip code now is getting that lead because they've clicked on tell me more about the property. Right. And really, you've done all the hard work. So you're giving those leads away. The cool thing about the single property website is it is only sharing you 
and your other listings. So there's no other advertising from any other companies, any other brokerages, any other agents, any other lenders. It is just all about you. At the bottom here, I can also see Tom's other listings. You'll also notice it includes your sales. And the reason is you might want to do a single property website for something you've sold. Meaning if I click on that, maybe I want to tell people on Facebook that I got this homeowner $10,000 more. We had a cash closing and we closed in seven days. Maybe I want to advertise that success. Well, you can do that as well. All you have to do is go to that single property website and then you can share that onto Facebook with your success story. So really, no matter who shares this afterward, it's still continuing to share your information. You're not giving all of your hard work over to another agent. So right over here, and I apologize if your Zoom, um, if your go-to webinar uh, box is covering it, but you can put it on Facebook, you can tweet it out, put it on Pinterest, email it to someone, um, you can share it on LinkedIn. I'm just going to do Facebook because it's probably the one most everybody knows and probably the easiest. I'm going to click on the Facebook share button. I'm simply going to put in my call to action. And you can see that I've actually used um, my Facebook business page, not my personal page, because that's what we should be doing, right? Um, so we want to make sure you're posting that, uh, especially if it's your listing, you want to make sure everybody's seeing that. You don't want to be in violation of fair housing, right? Because a lot, and a lot of times it's not intentional. I have to tell you, I was talking to a very nice lady um, and she was brand new to social media. she just gotten started and she just had like 10 people and they were all her family members. But remember, if NARA looks at that and you're only sharing your listing that way with a certain, you know, maybe you just your family members, that can be construed as not letting everyone see or giving fair access to everyone. So it's, it's really important to share it onto your Facebook um, your Facebook business page first. And then remember, you can sh always share it right onto your personal page from there. So it's a really good idea to share it to your business page and then share it onto your personal page. Um, but then just write your call to action. Like maybe this home won't last, you know, call me today um, and then simply post. Uh, I'll show you exactly what it's going to look like on your post here. I think I posted one on mine yesterday. So just jump over there real quick and I will show you what it's going to look like. Oh, no, that was my personal. Sorry. I got a couple of them for, for testing purposes. So it's like you got to click on the right one, Colleen. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so here is my business page. You can actually, I don't know if you know, but you can actually put your HomeSnap app or your company app, you can link to your business page, which I've done so I can send people to my business page. Um, they can actually um, connect to me via my app. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I scroll down here, let me kind of show you what that single property looks like. Now, of course, you want to have your call to action in there. But really, the whole idea is when I open it up as a consumer, seeing it either on, on uh, the business page or the personal page, going to take me to that same great looking uh, website where I can even contact that agent for more information. All right. So hopefully you like the single property website. We worked hard. Um, uh, is Brian still working on adding uh, an Instagram option? Yeah, there's a couple um, different uh, social media options that I'd like him to add with adding all of the fields and things. Um, I know he got a little overwhelmed with that. It's still on my request list. So uh, thank you, Jennifer, for reminding me. I will follow up on that. Um, we we ended up adding over, I think it was when we last checked, over 400 different fields and features that were specific to you that weren't originally there. So he has been really, really hard at work trying to backfill all of that. And um, that's taken you know a, a lot of time to get. As a matter of fact, we've got another batch that we're working on right now. Um, so that's kind of first priority. And then, yes, we would like to get some more social media options added. Uh, right to the single property website. So that's coming. I'm going to guess it's going to be closer to the end of the year. Okay, but great question. All right, so that is the single property website. Let me go back to my notes. I want to make sure I'm hitting all the important points 
Um, custom map searching. Okay, so let's talk about this one. This is another really good one that um, I did not know you could do. Uh, actually, my was uh, instructed by my good friend, Lisa Harris, as I mentioned, and she showed me this little trick and I thought, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Uh, again, it would save me a lot of time. And it really has to do with searching in large areas. Um, a good example is uh, there's a city over by me, and I'm, I don't know all of your cities, so I apologize. I would normally use um, more areas closer to you, but I haven't been up to the UP in a long time. Uh, my father did have a lot of property up in the Keweenaw, uh, I think 30 acres, um, and we used to go up there every summer. And I have to tell you, I still think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, and uh, he was right on high, Highway 1 and um, uh, just right on the cliffs of Lake Superior. It was just stunning. Although that lake was always cold. I never remember it being warm. Um, but we spent a lot of time up there. But I don't know your areas as well as I should. I'm hoping that maybe if we can come up and do some training, I can at least get a couple more examples. But in this area, we have a city um, called Warren. And it's a really big city. And there are certain pockets of the city that people are always wanting to live in. We call it kind of the golden triangle. A lot of judges live there, a lot of firefighters and uh, police chief because you have to live in the city to work in that city. So they, they kind of call it this golden triangle. But there is an area down here with a lot more listings. But generally, the, the area that they're looking for is like the triangle area. They don't really want the area maybe south of 12 mile. That's not as exciting to them. So how do you set that up where you don't have to draw the shape out every single time? Or how do you set it up so that you have all of a large area except maybe a certain pocket or a certain neighborhood? So let me, let me show you. So I'm going to go up to search. And I'm going to say that I have a buyer, he's searching, um, but he's looking for very specific things. So I'm going to say he's searching for a single family home. And remember, if you're still kind of new to Paragon, all of your options are right in those magnifying glasses to the right. So I'm going to say he's searching for a single family home, not a condo, because condos are listed in there. Um, you can see I've added my full search here too. And I'm going to say, of course, he's looking for actives um, and he's not looking for anything he can lease he's really looking for things that are just for sale uh, maybe i know he's looking for a brick ranch i could actually put that in here i could say okay he's looking for just a one story he doesn't he's not looking for uh, a two-story or a split level or a colonial so i'm going to say he's looking for um, simply a one story i'm going to say he's looking for at least three bedrooms um, maybe uh, two baths. Uh, would he like a basement? Now, here's where I noticed um, some of the differences in some of the UPART uh, tech support emails because I watched those very closely to see what is the common, you know, thing that people struggle with. And um, there is a way. Let's say that this buyer said, "You know what, Jennifer? I only want to see finished basements. Don't show me." So, if you're setting him up in the Clab Center and you don't put finished basement, he's getting all these basements that are, are empty and wouldn't be really what he wanted. So that's where the features come in, okay? So that's where it's gonna start getting very, very specific. Features are where you can really customize your search for a buyer. So we're gonna say, yes, he wants a garage, but maybe he wants a three car attached garage. We want that level of detail. So yes, he wants a basement. Yes, he wants a garage, but I want to be much more specific. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to this features area. Um, this is where a lot of features have been added for you guys. So I want to show you because there were some differences that we didn't realize that you guys were really going to need because of your geography, um, like phone line uh, at property, phone line to street. Um, electric to street, electric at property, because most everything around here has that. And we didn't realize that you had so many properties that were that didn't have that. So we had to add that in and backfill it. But I'm going to show you those things now. Features work like this. There can be a must have feature, a must not have feature, or it must have at least one of these items for my buyer to want it. So let me kind of explain. Maybe you have a client who says, you know what, Colleen, we must have an in-ground pool. Um, I can actually type in a keyword like pool, 
And I could say, okay, I don't want my buyer to automatically get it in the collab center unless it has an in-ground pool. Now, unfortunately, most of my clients are the exact opposite. They don't want to maintain a pool. Um, but I did have a client uh, recently, and in where I am in Macomb County, we have what's called a pass and fail well and septic ordinance, meaning it cannot close unless it passes a well and septic test. And you have to bring proof uh, done by the county at the time of close to close. Anyway, long story short, right before we went to close, this woman was going through a divorce. She found out that she was going to have to replace her septic field, but not only replace it, it was now going to have to be an engineered raised septic field because of the damage. And it was going to be $17,000. So when she, when she found this out, she said, Colleen, don't even show me a house that's going to be on a septic field. I don't want to see them. I don't want to ever maintain them again. I don't ever want to hear those words. So in her search, I made sure that I put must not have a septic field so that she knew that that was not something that she was going to have to deal with. And I knew it wasn't going to go to her collab center unless it didn't have a septic field. OK, and then there's the one or more. Maybe you have a client who has a boat. He doesn't necessarily need lakefront. But maybe he doesn't mind being on the river, uh, Clinton River, maybe over here we have a little island, wouldn't mind being on the island. So must have at least one of these. So of course you can type in the keywords, but really there's so many features now. If you go over to the magnifying glass to the right, we've broken them all out into categories. So remember that first example I gave you, Jennifer's clients say, Jennifer, we only want to see things with a finished basement. OK, sure. Then when we're setting up their collab center, we're going to say must have a finished basement. OK, so pretty easy. There's categories for almost everything, by the way. And I'm going to show you some new ones that we've just added for you. Matter, matter of fact, most of these now contain extra features that we added, but we also added whole sections um, for you as well. Um, so things like exterior features. This is where you're going to find things like outdoor kitchen. Um, where you're going to find things like patio, porches, spas, saunas, um, you know, terraces, things like that. Um, let's go to foundation type. This is where you're going to find things like built only on a basement. Um, you know, if you're considering a crawl or maybe must not have a crawl. So all of those things are going to be listed here. Some of the other ones I want to show you. Um, that I don't know if they're more common down here or I don't know if they're as popular up there, but we get a lot of questions on them. So I do want to show you uh, financial terms. Let's say that you have a client who has is looking for land contract terms. That means I have to know that the seller is going to take land contract terms. So that means I can say, OK, they want to buy anything that has land contract terms that have been agreed to in the listing contract by the seller. Um, so there's a lot of different financing options is a good one. Um, heating type, we added a lot of those for you. Water features. Um, so water features is another good one. Um, we, and I apologize, we should have known this going in. We originally, when we launched this, we did not have Interior Lake and Great Lake here. And we found out that that is a huge way you search. So if you are only wanting to see properties on the Great Lake, you can go ahead and you can say, OK, I only want to see things on the Great Lakes. Um, or again, if you're searching must have interior lake or Great Lake, then it has to have at least one of those in order to go to your buyer. So hopefully, hopefully that's making sense. Let me show you the, the parts that we added just for you. So I'm going to collapse all of these. So um, again, there were a lot of things for you guys that we didn't anticipate because we don't see them in the data share through the other 97% uh, of the state. They did not have these. One was shoreline, um, bluff, cleared, flat rock, pebble, sandy, sand, vegetation, wooded. And there's a few more in there. Um, you also had a special way that you displayed occupancy. We did not have that. We do that in showing time in our membership. So we added occupancy here. Um, lockbox, and you'll notice this is very specific. Even though everyone in the data share sees it, you can see if it has a UPAR, which I believe you guys use central lock, you can see that it's a UPAR lockbox or another type of lockbox. Um, main floor uh, bedroom, first floor bath. So a lot of things were added just for you, as well as supplemental heat. 
Um, you guys had a lot more in the supplemental heat category. Utilities and electric, these again were added specifically for you guys. Um, gas at the property, gas not available, propane tank lease, propane. So if you're not finding those where you did before, I'm going to encourage you really to check out all of those should now be under features. Um, and when you're adding in a listing, we've added another section. I'm going to show you that as well. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Getting to know those features, that's going to be really, really important, obviously, for you. All right, so now, right now, you can see I'm setting up this buyer, and I have a ridiculous amount of active listings because it's looking for everything, right? Now we have to tell it, where are we looking? And that's where the mapping inclusions and exclusions come in. So I'm going to go into the mapping. I've said he wants a three-bedroom, you know, how many bathrooms, what's the square footage. I'm, I'm like, narrowing all that down, right? But now now I want to go in and I want to say, where is he looking? So I'm going to go into my map and I'm going to find the area where he's looking. Now, by the way, a little secret, it's not really part of this class, but I'm going to throw that in too. Um, a little secret is if you simply go right up here and type in your, if you're going on a listing appointment, if you type in your subject property, like, let's say I'm going to go on a listing at 41539 Wessel. It happens to be Wessel Drive. Make sure you leave off the drives, the ways, the places, because it's Google Maps. Less is always best. You're going to put in the Rube Street address, comma, the city. Once you do that, you're going to hit the magnifying glass, and guess what? It's going to actually locate your subject property on the map. Here's where it gets really cool, though. If you're trying to find comps, let's say you're trying to find comps within one mile of your subject property, you can hit that search radius button. Let me actually move my crazy go-to webinar box. There we go. Now what I've done is I've just actually created a radius search to find those comparable properties on the listing side. Now with you guys driving a lot more, I think this is another cool feature maybe for you. This little yellow man, now I have seen him on Google everything, but I never actually clicked on him, so I didn't know what he did, so let me show you what he does. If you want to preview a listing you're getting ready to show, or you want to preview a neighborhood, you can actually grab that little yellow man. It's actually going to show you where you're setting that little man in front of. So if I want to see exactly where he's going, I can literally without having to get in my car and spend money for gas, I can literally walk down the street. I can see the homes to the left. I can see the homes to the right. This was another feature that, you know, it's, we're all so busy. We're not clicking on every single button in the MLS, right? This is another feature. If you're driving a ways away and you kind of want to tour the neighborhood, this is a great way to do it. Now, here's the cool part. You see this little subject flag? It's kind of hard to see. And I apologize because I'm especially over a, a zoomed webinar here or a, a go-to webinar that little subject flag is telling me this in fact is the subject property so not only can i tour the entire neighborhood i can see the house i'm going on a listing appointment tonight for okay so again you can see the property to the left property to the right you can walk the neighborhoods that's what that little yellow google man does but now let's talk about um something that was just added last month i'm going to zoom a little bit to kind of show this example um and i'm going to say that uh, maybe you especially where you guys are i'm sure that you probably have a lot of areas that require flood insurance there is a little stack of it looks like three stacks of paper up here this little stacks you can actually click on the flood plane and you see how it just applied the floodplain for that area? It uses the FEMA maps, but it's literally applying where that buyer may need flood. And now, I do always tell my buyers as an agent, I can't guarantee that doesn't mean you're not going to need flood insurance, but I know the areas we need to ask the questions of the lender ahead of time, right? Um, if you want to, um, let's say you wanted to see parcel lines, you could select. So the, the floodplain was just added. The um, map uh, of buses was just added that's probably not a big thing up there down here it's a little more popular but you can also see parcel lines on here so if i select parcel lines now the thing with parcel lines is you do have to really move in 
um, on your map to be able to see those. So if it doesn't look like it's coming in now, now do you see how it's starting to show more of the parcels? You have to be really zoomed in to get those parcel lines. You can also label them. Um, and so I can even put the tax IDs on them if I want to see each one that way. Um, but really, when you're using parcel lines, the biggest challenge is making sure that you are zooming in enough to get um, those parcel lines. So if I want to know what a parcel line is, I simply click in it. Now, do you see how it's showing the, um, the front of the street has 60 feet, uh, back is 120. So I can see that whole parcel line and I can see the property mapped out to the left. So that was something I did not know was there. And the reason is I had never zoomed in all the way and clicked on it. So hopefully that helps you when you're trying to discover uh, lot lines of a particular area, zoom in almost as far as you can possibly go, uh, then click in, it's gonna give you the perimeter of the area. You can even label it with the um, tax ID number, and then you can even see those lot lines. Now, I personally did not know that was there for a long, long time. So again, uh, I said when I was gonna teach this class, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna show people that's there because I never knew, and it is very helpful. You can also apply county lines. So if you have a client who wants to stay in Houghton County, you can apply those when you're setting up their search. So all of that is right under this layering here. And again, the hardest thing about using those layers is just remembering to zoom in and zoom out depending on what you're looking for. County, obviously you want to zoom out more. Um, lot sizes, you want to zoom in more. Um, so it kind of makes sense, right? How, how, what level do you need to see it at? Okay. Um, good questions. Yes. I'll, I'll tell Brian you said thank you, Jennifer. Um, are you able to explain the difference between bathroom and lavatory? Lavatory is new and can cause some confusion. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And if it helps you, you can even be more specific. And so, Jennifer, you've asked such great questions and I can't, I can't thank you enough because I know you guys do things, did do things a little bit differently. And it's, it's a challenge now going through that conversion and making it make sense. So there is a total bathrooms here. I, I'm going to be honest, um, as an agent, I still kind of like separate fields for lavatory, which is a half bath versus the full bath. If I'm doing a CMA on a in, in an area where there's a lot of comps, I wanna know, did it have two full baths and a lab, meaning a half bath? Did it have three full baths and two half baths? What did it have? So if you're like me, and not saying you are, but if you're like me and you just want that extra level of detail, here's another secret. Okay, and this one I don't, I'm gonna be honest, that's why they love when I teach this class, there's some things I can tell were not designed by an agent in any MLS system that I've ever used. And doing it 22 years, there's a difference between people actually using the tools in the field and the people who originally create them and hand them out of the box, right? But I love Paragon because you can customize it and put them in the way you need it to work for your business because everybody's doing business differently. So good example. So Jennifer brings up a great example. How do you know? How do you know how many baths, how many lists? Yeah, you can open the listing ticket and see it, but what if you're looking for something specific right out of the gate? Scroll all the way down. And I apologize, it shouldn't be this way, but you can fix it. I'm gonna show you how. Click that little drop down. When you click that drop down, there are a bunch of fields in here that you can move out of this little drop down secondary criteria box and way up in your box, you can put it at the top if you want. You can drag and drop it into any order you want. Let me show you. So one of my frustrations is that in my secondary criteria out of the box, acreage and year built are actually in secondary criteria. Now I think Brian has fixed this since this, but um, you know, for people coming on board, but when I started, acreage and your built were actually in secondary criteria. And I don't know about you, but that's something I use all the time. <laughs> so having them in secondary criteria made absolutely no sense to me. I'm like, who, why would I go down and scroll and scroll and scroll to get all the way to here um, to answer Jennifer's question? There are also bathrooms full, bathrooms half. So if you want to be more specific in your searching, these, it kind of breaks it down. Is it a half bathroom? Is it a full bathroom? Now here's what you can do. 
all you gotta do is go to this customize button right here. Just like I showed you on the quick search when we got started today, you can customize exactly what fields you want in this search. But there is one little trick when it comes to secondary criteria. So if there's something you don't want, if you're finding yourself constantly scrolling to the bottom of your primary criteria, your top stuff here, or you wanna add full addresses like I did, remember you can drag and drop these in any order you want. So for me, I love that full addresses button. I was so thankful when Brian built that. That's right at the top of my list. So if you wanna add that, let me show you how to do that. Just like we did previously, you're gonna type in the word full. You are going to check it off. You're gonna hit the add button. It's gonna always drop it at the bottom. So you're always gonna look for it at the bottom and you're just gonna drag it to exactly where you want it in your list. Okay, so really, really easy. Just remember to hit apply. The secondary criteria to answer Jennifer's question about the bathrooms full, bathrooms have if you want more detail. Now I know there has also been some um, confusion in, and with, more on the appraiser side, well, what if it's a bathroom in the basement? What if it's a, I kid you not, I showed a house with a bathroom and just a toilet in the attic, in the attic, unfinished attic, by the way, and the agent actually had the nerve to count it. I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty gutsy. Anyway, <laughs> um, so if you, in our system, when you are entering a listing, it requires you, it does not give you any other option but to label it where that bathroom is. Is it in the basement? Is it on the first floor? Is it in the, you know, on the second floor? You always have to specify. So you're able to see what's above grade, meaning is there a bathroom in the basement? And is there a bathroom in the above grade square footage? So it does actually break that down um, because we require that when you're putting your listings in. So the next thing is, if you've got this bathrooms full and bathrooms have field that you wanna be able to search on, all you have to do is change this from primary to secondary. Because right now, think of it this way, it's in the secondary box. I wanna get it out of that box so I can put it in the above box. So I'm gonna say acreage and year built, I totally want out of that box. So I'm going to remove those. Now, all I have to do is say, okay, now I wanna put it in my primary box, right? So now I take acreage, I add it to my primary, Again, it's always gonna drop it at the bottom, right? So I'm gonna move it in the area that I want and I'm gonna go ahead and simply apply that. Now, my acreage isn't gonna be down here anymore. It's always going to be up in the box so I don't have to keep scrolling down for the same things again and again. And here's my acreage right here. So keep in mind, if there's something down below that you wanna be able to search on, or there's a field that's not there that you wanna search on, remember that customized box, that is the key. And I wanna show you one more thing. I kind of forgot to show this in map, so I, I'm just gonna apologize. Um, in your map search, so we kind of started this off. I showed you some of the new features that we just added. But let's say that there's an area, again, that they don't want to live in, okay? So let's say it's a big city, and um, I'm going to use Sterling Heights just because I'm kind of familiar with it. It's a good one to show. Let's say that you have a buyer, and they want to live in a particular area of a large city, or maybe there's just a tiny area they don't want to live in. Here's another trick. If you go to the drawing tools, and I, I personally, you can use any of these, but I like the Polygon one the best. Um, let's say he doesn't want to live, uh, he wants to live south of 18. He doesn't want to cross over Dodge Park here. He doesn't want to go east of Dodge Park. Uh, maybe his mother-in-law lives over by 17, so we're going to keep him a little closer over to 8. You can literally draw out the area that you want that buyer um, to view. And as you can see, I didn't put in any criteria, so we're getting a lot. But maybe there's a little area right here that they're not interested in. So here's your next time saving tip. If there is an area that they are not interested in, you can actually draw a shape on a shape. So I'm going back to those same drawing tools, but I'm gonna say, you know what? 
I put in the whole city of Warren, right? I put in the whole city of Sterling Heights. But you know what? He really doesn't want to live in this little pocket, in this little neighborhood. I can actually, and you're, you're probably thinking, well, lady with the fuzzy hair, didn't you just put more shapes in? Well, one more step. You're going to actually click on edit. And you're going to go to where it says include, this little uh, inclusion button. And you're going to hit exclude. What it just did is you can see it took out all those comps or all of those properties so that buyer is not going to see anything that comes up in that area. So if you have selected a very large area for your buyer, you can actually exclude a small city or, or a small part of that city. By the way, you can have up to 10 shapes on your map. I did not know that either. Today, buyers are looking in multiple areas. So maybe you've got that area over here, but you've also got another pocket that they're looking at in this neighborhood. Maybe they really like this uh, particular subdivision or this particular area. So you can draw another area there. So the idea is you can be very, very specific on your maps exactly where you're looking for those buyers. Jennifer, you're making my day. I just want you to know that. Um, so the difference between a, a bath, just to clarify, is a bath is a full bath and the lavatory um, or half bath is a lav. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. But yes, when you are specifically looking at an area on the map, use these map tools. You can have up to 10 shapes on one map um, and you can exclude certain areas so that they're not getting things you didn't want them to see. Okay, uh, what else did I want to show you? I wanted to show you BSNA records, and I also wanted to show you, I made notes on my phone. I'm not, you know, reading my phone. I just want you to know that's where my notes are, so I keep on track because sometimes I go a little off track. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is the BSNA integration. Um, this is something we worked hard on, and we use the live BSNA server. Now, I do not know how good... Um, the BSNA records are up where you are. So I just want to start off with that. Um, some areas, BSNA is awesome and it's 100%. They're all moving in that direction. There is a government mandate saying that they do have to have online records. I think it's, honestly, it's 2027, um, but they're all moving in that direction. That doesn't mean that they're all done yet though, right? So if you are looking for a record in BSNA, what we've tried to do is just make that simpler. Um, it doesn't waive the fee if BSNA charges the fee. It doesn't do that, so don't, don't get too excited. What it does do is it takes you from that specific listing into the BSNA record without having to log out of Paragon, go into BSNA, type in the municipality, wait for that to load, type in the address. It's a lot of extra clicks. You can actually just click on it looks like a garbage can. I apologize. It's a government pillar. When they stuffed it on the button, it kind of looks a little more like a garbage can, in my opinion. But it's this little government pillar, they tell me. Click on it, and it's going to take you into the BSNA. Now, I have looked up what BSNA meant no less than 20 times. It is just the name of the software. It has no acronym, so I apologize. There is no cool... I thought there'd be like Bureau of Software and Intelligence or something. You know, it's not. It's... it's <laughs> So it's just the name of the software, but what it does do is it, it takes you directly into that municipality. So it's found the city for me. It found the county for me, and it takes me directly to that property record. Um, from here, I can find out the tax information. Um, I can find out the property information. So if I'm doing a CMA on this, on this property, well, first of all, I'd be lucky because it was a $3 million property. I never have that kind of luck. Um, but secondly, I can go in, I can see, is it built on a basement? What is the frontage? What is the depth of the property? What is the lengthy legal description? What is the square footage of the property? All of that is listed in the BSNA record. So BSNA is a great tool. It does link to the live BSNA server. It's not a feed so that you see updated information constantly. It's not like some tax software systems where they're a year behind and that makes me crazy. So um, I am very proud of the work that we've done with BSNA to get that deep linking in here. But again, that's only good if you have your municipalities all using BSNA. So, okay. Uh, next, I wanted to show you, I think we'll wrap up with the adding a listing. Uh, I know everybody's uh, excited to add a little bit more inventory. Lord knows we could certainly use it in this area. 
If you're inputting a listing, you can input a listing by simply going to the listing tab up here at the top. We are working on the data sheet push from Zipform. And what that means is we actually provide a way that you can fill out the data sheet in Zipform. That means they have to finish the data sheet though, by the way. Um, you will be able to go in, fill out the data sheet, hit a button, and it will create the partial listing for you in Paragon, which I have to tell you, I love. I do that in our system now and it's fantastic. I basically fill out my data form, get all the information ready to go, now, generally, if I'm going on a listing appointment, I may not know the final listing price yet. I may not know the room sizes. What I do is I fill in everything I know, I hit save, then I go back after I have that final listing price and my room measurements, I add those couple of things in, I actually do it on my phone through our app, um, and then I hit save and I push all that data over to Paragon so that my admin can check it over um, she hits save and now it's live in Paragon or I can check it over to some offices. The admins are the only ones who can do it where uh, my company is either the agent or admin can do it. So it just depends on your company policy. But here's what happens when you're getting ready to add a listing in. You just go to the listing section. We have purchased the property records for all 83 counties in Michigan. So in, when you are ready and you're in a hurry to add a property into the MLS and get it listed, there is a tax autofill button right here. Okay, so you're going to click that tax autofill button and you're going to find the county. Now, I don't know a listing offhand uh, in your county, so I'm going to use mine. I apologize. I'm going to use the Macomb County because that's where I am. Here's the trick to this, though. There is a secret. What you really want to do is you want to keep it simple because mostly it is um, using a lot of less is best concept, if you will. Um, when I say less is best, uh, you don't want to add in, remember how I said you don't want to add in things like uh, Boulevard or Circle or um anything like that, you want to put in the less amount of information so it finds the tax record. Because if you, let me explain, tax records are very uh, exact. So if you put in circle, C-I-R period, and the tax record doesn't have circle at all, it's not going to pull it. So less is best here. Think of it this way. When you click on the tax autofill, you're only going to enter two fields of information. You're going to enter the house number. So I'm going to use my good old example, 41539 and the street root street name. So even though it's Wessel Drive, I'm only gonna put in Wessel because I promise you, if you put in too much information, it will error, it won't work. So you wanna put in just those two fields, house number and the root street name. You then wanna go up to here at the top where it says search. Immediately, it's gonna pull up that property record, as you can see right here. So it found it, 41539. Wessel Drive. So what I want to do is I want to check that off and I want to autofill it. Now it's going to show you what it's going to start autofilling. There might be something, maybe a certain tax record you don't want to add. Maybe um, you want to verify that something is correct and you maybe you're not sure it was built in 1973. You don't want to auto uh, populate that. You can simply deselect it from here if you choose. Then all you have to do is hit the save button. Now, when I go into the property record right here, it's autofilling all of that, the lengthy tax ID, um, all of that is coming in for me. So I don't have to type that all in. Um, so when I go to legal and tax, here we go, got more of that property record coming in. I don't have to type it in. Um, here's the special section I want to show you um, because, again, um, we did not realize the amount of specialty fields you were going to need with your location. Um, the extended fields down here, there's an extended fields box. All you want to do is click that extended fields and you're going to find things that are specific to you. Trailside, yes, no. Trailside description, ski resort, yes, no. Ski resort name, shoreline, occupancy, those things that were very, very specific to you. The UPAR lockbox, um, uh, you, you had a special addendum field. Um, you had a zoning field. You, we also increased the directions field. We increased the agent remarks and the public remarks. And I'm actually thankful because we only had it at 1,000. 
um, and we increased that to 2000 for you. And I think directions, I think we increased to 5000, I think. Um, but anyway, long story short, thanks to you, I got a few of the features I had been asking for as an agent too, like whole house generator, generator, some of those cool things too. So thank you. Um, and then we also got some expanded fields. Um, and you'll find those again when you're adding in your listing, you're going to go to the extended fields area. You're also going to be able to add your disclosures. Now, this is very important. This is going to be something new too. If you are listing uh, a property in a resort, or if you are listing a condo up there, add in your bylaws and your rules and regs. Because remember, now agents, when they are showing those properties, they can in HomeSnap see the bylaws so they can see whether or not they can have a dog there. They can see um, if there's a pet restriction, maybe you can only have two, maybe there's a weight limit. You can see all of that. Um, you know, what the HOA covers. I don't have to call you as the listing agent. I can see them here. You can also see the seller's disclosures and um, the uh, the lead-based paint disclosures. All of those are there right in HomeSnap. If you haven't taken the HomeSnap class, it's a really good class. I encourage you to take it because We've also built in Paragon in the HomeSnap, and you now can walk the property lines in real time, um, which I think is very, very cool. Um, but all of that is in HomeSnap. So you do wanna make sure uh, that you have taken the HomeSnap class because it is your mobile MLS. It's where we're putting our mobile MLS dollars. There is Paragon Connect, um, and you can use that, but I gotta be honest, it doesn't have all the functions that HomeSnap does. Uh, matter of fact, I will show you one of my favorite features since it's right up on my screen. Just one of the things that we cover in uh, the HomeSnap class is the walking property lines in augmented reality. So imagine this, you're at the property, you're not sure is the tree in the stream, is it on this side of the property or would that be on the neighbor's side? Sometimes it's very hard to tell, especially if it's newer construction. Imagine being able to take your app on your phone, open it up, and this is what happens. It asks if you can use, it asks the program asks if it can use your phone's camera. You have to allow that. Once you hit allow, it's gonna show it just like this. It's literally placing augmented reality lines on the property for you. So, and as you can see, there's some trees. You can see it's gone above and around the trees to show you where those lot lines start and stop. It does some very cool things. Now, I have not tested it in the UP. I can tell you, um, I've tested it in most of our association places and it's pretty spot on. Some of the, um, some of the water areas like Port Huron, um, Bay City, some of those can be a little bit off um, on some of the, the water, some of the water areas, or if they have big lakes, things like that. Sometimes I'll find that's a little bit off, um, but most of the time it's pretty dead on. So I would encourage you to take the home staff class so you can see that. That is really everything I had. I ran two minutes over, so I apologize. If you have any questions, and Jennifer, thank you for all your amazing questions. That really helps a lot, especially because I don't know your area as well as I should. Um, so thank you for chiming in and giving uh, all of the, those great uh, questions and, and comments. Uh, I did record this. So remember, uh, you will not only uh, get a survey after the class, letting us know what you thought of the class or if there's anything you think we could do better. I'm always interested in your feedback. Uh, but keep in mind, we have a YouTube channel where I've recorded this class and every class that I've done, which I think we're up to like 30 of them now, um, and they're all available. You can watch them anytime. I created these playlists where if you just click on the UPAR playlist, you will see everything that is specific to you. So if you click on this Upper Peninsula playlist, it will list out all the classes. All you, can, right, good you can fast forward to exactly what you're looking for. The whole class list is over here on your right. Um, and I'm always interested in feedback. If there's something you would like to know more about, um, or something you think that we could cover better, please let us know. Let us know how we're doing, um, and that way we can keep customizing these classes for you. All right, let me see if there's any more questions. Oh, Jennifer, you made my day. Thank you again, and thank you for being so interactive. It really helps when you know, um, you know what people are using it for. It helps when you give great comments like that and, and great questions, so I really appreciate you. Hope you all have a happy and uh, happy selling, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.